Hi everyone, so it's going to be a little bit of an informal video. I'm over here, I'm actually walking my dog. Um, so, maybe see. let's show you the dog for a second. <laughs> Dakota, come here. Come here, say hi. Say hi. She never holds still, as you can imagine. <laughs> Dakota. Oh boy. Anyway, I'm walking my dog and I wanted to touch on the topic of fear because fear was something that I addressed briefly but it was more from the physiological standpoint and not so much about the different solutions and how we can kind of stop fear in its tracks and stop that negative fight or flight uh, state that we can get in. So what happens with fight or flight? Our amygdala basically sends out a warning signal. That warning signal travels to the parts of the brain. We get an influx of adrenaline into our bodies and we get an influx of cortisol. Cortisol keeps the adrenaline levels up, um, but it can also do a lot of long-term damage, and one of that is, let me try and get the better light. One of those symptoms is weight gain, especially belly fat, and that's something that a lot of us are really trying to defeat. So what if the solution to weight gain is actually being able to stay calmer, and how do we get calm, especially in this time when everything just seems so overwhelming. Well, the best way I've found is through breath work. I've been in situations, especially within the past uh, few months, where I've had a lot of anxiety and had to deal with fear. And I've searched for different solutions. And breath work is really the way that I find can kind of instantly turn off that uh, fight or flight response, instantly cut down a panic attack or uh, get rid of anxiety. So there's several different methods that you could use. I like um, the point, biggest point is to use a shorter inhale and a longer exhale. The best way is breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Uh, I found this one particular technique and I'll link some of this stuff. And I found that uh, doing one particular technique where you breathe in through your nose, count of four, and then breathe out. But it, and breathe out for like kind of eight. But what you want to do is you want to lift your soft palate in the back. So you have your hard palate in the front. And then you kind of slide your tongue back. You can feel your soft palate. And you lift it. So it's almost... As I've heard it described, it's like fogging, if you're fogging up a mirror, that's the kind of breath that you want to do. So it's like a kind of if you're doing that. So you want to that's just if you do that for 10 rounds that's going to be a great way to uh, Diffuse anxiety, especially if you have a panic, if you're starting to get a panic attack. Uh, try that, and it really will help to diffuse anxiety. Uh, the other thing is the vagus nerve, which travels pretty much from like behind, up from the brain, down the neck, through the heart, and then down through the stomach. So, and do like from here, and then it travels down. Uh, left side here and then goes down to your stomach 
that is what's called the queen of the parasympathetic system. The parasympathetic system is your rest and digest system. And activating that will help, sorry, I have a live segment around me, will help to turn on that parasympathetic system and get you more relaxed and able to focus and deal with whatever situation you're facing. The most powerful way is through the breath work. So you want to do that uh, 10 rounds of that breathing that I just showed you. And there's a few other things. I sing. Interestingly enough, singing can activate the breath work, uh, meditation, which of, of course goes along with breath work, and cold, cold exposure. You wouldn't think so, but cold exposure can be very powerful in helping to calm us. Um, I don't know if anybody's heard the, of the Wim Hof method. That's something that I've been trying out. It. I want to put a little bit of caution here. If you want to look into the Wim Hof method, certainly do that. The breathing rounds are pretty intense. Uh, you, you're going to be breathing in and out, in and out for rounds about 30 to 40 breaths. And then you breathe out and you hold. Uh, really for as long as you can. So obviously if you push it too far, uh, that can cause a problem. But the other part of it is doing cold showers and ice bath. And it is something that will stimulate the vagus nerve and activate the parasympathetic system. And it does help a lot of people with anxiety. It has helped me with anxiety. So those are just uh, some some ways, some simple tips that you can look at. I find, yes, yeah, so sing, you can sing to yourself. I also find music to be very empowering. That's helped me a lot. And, and if you're in a situation where you feel powerless or helpless, uh, know that you're not. But I would encourage you to start doing activities that make you feel powerful. Um, for me, I started doing Krav Maga, which has helped me a lot. Uh, so you can do look into doing martial arts, yoga, um, any sorts of athletic activities. Uh, really, anything that makes you feel strong, makes you feel powerful, I would encourage you to look into and start doing. And if you are struggling with anxiety and anxious thoughts, start journaling. Journaling can really be a great way to... Uh, get all of those thoughts that kind of it's almost like circular thoughts you know, it's like a, a loop you know I'm never going to get through this I'm never going to you know, and it just keeps repeating and repeating and repeating until we start to believe it and we start to kind of learn helplessness in a way uh, so journaling those thoughts, getting them out onto paper and uh you know, Dr. Daniel Amen is a pretty well-known psychiatrist, holistic psychiatrist, and he calls them autono ants, autonomic, uh, automatic no negative thoughts. And he said the way that he deals with it is to take each negative thought and run it through a list. Is it true? Are you really sure it's true? Um, and what's the likelihood that it's going to happen, and then you flip that negative thought to a positive one. Uh, so, my business is never going to come back. Is that true? Could be. Could be not. Do we really know? Uh, are we absolutely positive that is true? Do you really know that it's never going to come back? Um, and then, what can you do about that? What can, how can you change that situation? And then you flip it and you say, my business will come back. It's going to recover and it's going to be even better than it was before. Is, it, is that true? Yes, it could be true. Are we sure it can be true? Uh, maybe, maybe not. But, you know, flipping it to that positive lens can really help to change our mindset. And that can help 
status. So now I have a dog bitch barking on camera, but I'm going to head off and hope this was helpful for all of you. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.